So if we're correcting a dystocia in a cow and we've already determined that the calf is in the correct presentation, position and posture and we've placed the chains on the calf's legs to help facilitate delivery of this calf, sometimes we need assistance to forcefully take this calf from the cow per vagina. And we can use assistance by using several different people to apply traction on the chain to pull the calf out. But sometimes we need more than just several people who can work each chain. So therefore, what we have available to us is a calf jack. And that's what this structure is known as. This calf jack helps to provide a lot of force to deliver a very difficult parturition in a cow, um, especially where there is a space related problem. So the amount of force that it can deliver can be quite extreme and can cause a tremendous amount of problems to the cow. Um, problems as severe tearing of the birth canal or even paralysis of the calf's hind legs. So when we choose to use the calf jack, we have to be very careful and understand how we want to make it work for us without causing any damage. The first thing we do is we put the chains in place and then we attach the chains to a hook on the calf jack so that the hook grasps it and keeps a hold of it. And then we take the second chain and we put it on the other hook on the side. This is a dual ratchet calf jack. So for every crank that we do on the handle, we actually will pull one or the other leg, one first and then the other second. And this is very important because the largest part in diameter of the calf coming through the birth canal is the calf's shoulders. So what we want to make sure to do is pull one limb first so that we clear that shoulder through the birth canal and then we pull the second limb through so that we don't bring both shoulders at the same site into the birth canal because that's the largest diameter. So we want one to go first and the second shoulder to clear secondly. And this calf jack has the ability to help us guide the calf through that way. Once we hook the chains to the hooks, then what we do is we have our assistant hold the calf jack up straight and then start to crank on the calf. And you can see right away it pulls, do it one more time, it pulls on this leg first. So if we stop there, do it one more time, stop right there. What we're doing is extending this front leg first through the birth canal entry point where the shoulder is clearing first. And then once we finish the crank by coming back down, we pull the other leg through. And you can see as we continue to pull this calf into the birth canal, we're bringing the calf's head with the front feet, which is the exact way we want this calf to be delivered. You must always, always, as a very important part of correcting and delivering any calf is to pay attention to dilation of the birth canal and plenty of lubrication. So you may actually have to do this many times as you wait for a little bit to further dilate and actually lubricate. So we will constantly be lubricating the calf's head and even further in, we may actually go further in and lubricate the calf's shoulders at the entry of the birth canal. Once we have plenty of lubrication and dilation and we feel we're going to do no harm with the calf jack other than delivering this calf from this cow, then we can proceed forward. So initially we will keep the calf jack long pull sort of in this plane here. So we will crank one more time up and back down. And what we will find is that once the head clears and the shoulder mass is in the birth canal, we may find it very difficult to crank. So we may need to have further dilation. To help in assisting in further dilation is we may actually take the end of this long pole and go down to the ground. And you can see down, slowly down to the ground. And you can see that actually brings a little bit more of the calf into and out of the birth canal and out of the vulva. And it also creates the normal arc that we would prefer this calf be delivered in. The calf generally comes 
from deep within the abdomen up over the peak of the pelvic entry and then back down out onto the ground and that's a normal arc position. So at some point we want to make sure that our calf jack is assisting in creating that arc. Once we have that amount of tension and force on the calf, we will lift that end back up and then we will crank a few more times. You can see the calf is being delivered. Yep, a few more times, slowly paying attention that everything's in alignment. We will keep doing that a few more times. And then if we want more assistance and leverage, we will take the end of it down and we'll get more calf you see coming out of the cow. Now we're almost finished with the delivery of this calf. So we have to kind of lift up again, do a few more cranks, a few more. A few more, yep, here comes the calf. Again, in the normal presentation, position and posture, down with the end, we'll get more calf out. Okay, lift up again. And this can be very quick now, okay? Keep going, keep going. We can rotate the calf a little bit so that our hip diameter is the lengthy part of the pelvic entry. Down at the very end again, more calf comes out. Up, crank a few more. We have a lot of pole here to work with. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, yep, until we catch the calf and the calf is delivered completely out of the cow. You can drop everything down now. And then we make sure to pay attention to the calf, to make sure the calf breeds, and then also pay attention to the cow after delivery.